Seven days, five mountains, one region. This is The Good Life. Located pretty much in between Jackson Hole Resort and Grand Targhee, Teton Pass is a backcountry staple with expansive bowls, forgiving trees, and tight chutes that rival any terrain found inbounds or elsewhere throughout North America. Since we were already driving over the pass, it was a no-brainer decision to stop along our way and explore the zone. With a bit of luck, we were able to arrange to meet up with professional skier and Jackson Hole Air Forcer Jason Tattersall for an early lap on Glory Bowl. Tattersall, one of those guys who modifies his ski boots with carbon fiber buckles so he can go faster, was an experience we didn't want to miss. Look at those babies right there. <laughs> carbon. Unlike the day before, snow was falling, the wind was ripping, and the temperature was cold enough to force us to layer up as we buckled our boots and strapped down our skis for the boot pack to the top of glory. The boot pack, which climbs approximately 1,600 feet, was Tattersall fast. At the top of the boot pack, we checked our beacons, standard protocol in the backcountry, as Jason gave us the beta on how we would approach our descent. We are glad to have the local knowledge, and we suggest you do the same by hiring a guide or going with someone in the know. We found light, dry powder on a 35 degree slope that was all ours. Always moving fast, Tattersall hopped a ride back to the top of the pass as we waited for another. The pass is a skiers and boarders paradise and local drivers are often willing to stop and offer a ride. Loading up after our run, we couldn't help but get excited about our next stop, Grand Targhee Resort. Grand Targhee is a small, quiet resort known for its deep powder, no frills ambiance, and early tracks program that with any luck we might be able to swing tomorrow morning. Waking up early after a good night's sleep, we headed to the Snorkel, Targhee's local breakfast joint that serves up amazingly good food and an affordable price to fuel up before early tracks. We'd met up with marketing manager Ken Ryder the night before and he'd scored us with the green light. The program, available to advanced and expert skiers, provides an hour of untracked powder and exploration with a mountain guide. Think of it as a Disney early pass without the screaming kids and half-baked rides. Loading an empty lift with a group of skiers who we'd met through various friends, we knew the day would be fantastic. We are given open access to certain terrain that'll be safe and really fun. And then we get an opportunity to go rip it up before anybody else does. So we call it early tracks. Uh, it's a great way to start a day. <laughs> it's extraordinary. We just had some great laps, and now uh, it's time to get a cup of coffee and defrost the beard a little bit. <laughs> While Targhee might be smaller than Jackson, the resort still has some incredible terrain, and the lack of lift lines is the opposite of Jackson's usually packed tram. After nearly a full day of skiing, we decided to head to the heart of Targhee's social scene and get to know our new friend some more. The Trap, as it's so aptly named, is a no-frills joint with cold beer, bar food, and your own personal mug if you're a local. Sitting down, we reminisced about our day and got the lowdown on why Targhee is such a special place from Dan Verbeden. People around here are really, really friendly and uh, yeah, there's, I don't feel like there's a lot of attitude. People are here to have fun and ski powder and, and be with their friends and have a good time. 
Later that night, as we drove to the closest town for a bite to eat, the clouds broke for the first time during the trip and the Grand Teton finally came into view. Standing tall in the darkening night sky, we pulled over and sat in silence. Our last two days had been killer. We'd boot packed with a Jackson Legend, enjoyed fresh powder on a desolate backcountry bowl, skied during early ups at Grand Targhee, and drank beer with new friends. Tomorrow, weather permitting, we head north to Big Sky, Montana, the home of America's biggest skiing and one of the West's most dramatic lone peaks. Gotcha!